Hannah, thank you. And we have another exclusive update on the investigation into the West Virginia State Police. Once again, it resolves, revolves around the self-professed whistleblower whose letter ignited the probe. Kenny Bass joins us now here in the studio live. And Kenny, this investigation continues to raise some serious questions about the operations of the state police. Well, certainly there are some valid questions today. Corporal Joseph Comer is the trooper who claims to be the whistleblower who wrote the then anonymous letter that triggered the investigation into the state police. He and his lawyer claim Comer is being targeted for retaliation by some members of the agency. On Friday, a new warrant was served in relation to Corporal Comer. Tonight, we're looking to get answers about the officers and the circumstances surrounding that warrant. On Friday, members of the West Virginia State Police served a search warrant on the Monongalia County home of Trooper Wendy Comer. She's the ex-wife of Corporal Joseph Comer. They have two children together. Joseph Comer is subject to a domestic violence protective order and is free on bond after being accused of felony strangulation and misdemeanor battery by Trooper Vicki Mara. She's the mother of Joseph Comer's son and alleges he attacked her during December child custody exchanges in Ritchie County. Both the conditions of Comer's DVP order and his bond require he does not possess firearms. A sworn statement citing Trooper Mara and First Sergeant K.W. Huddleston prompted the search. Any type of a possession of a firearm would have been a violation, and that's an arrestable offense. And it's also an offense that could, be, could revoke his bond in Ritchie County. So both of those uh, could have possibly incarcerated him. So what's the goal here? Is that the goal? I, I, that's my opinion that that's what the goal was, or else they wouldn't be executing a search warrant on his ex-wife's house. First Lieutenant J.P. Branham made the search warrant request. In his sworn statement containing grounds for the action, Branham said that Joseph Comer's truck had been observed at the residence by First Sergeant Huddleston and Trooper Mara for extended periods of time, specifically from April 12th to April 18th. The statement says the truck was at the home from early morning to evening hours. Based upon those observations and the fact that Wendy Comer is a trooper with weapons issued to her, First Lieutenant Branham said he had probable cause to believe the residence and surrounding vehicles contained evidence that Joseph Comer was a prohibited person in possession of a firearm. Branham reasoned if Joseph Comer was staying with his ex-wife, he would have access to Wendy Comer's agency-issued two Glock pistols, Smith & Wesson AR-15 rifle, and Remington shotgun. The judge issued the warrant. The biggest problem I see is that um, the alleged victim here, who's a trooper, uh, Vicki Mara, um, is actually in a unit uh, that deals with children. And she lives 30, 40 miles from, from there uh, at the closest, her closest route. And my question is why would a victim who has alleged that she's scared of my client be trying to find him with a firearm doing surveillance. It just doesn't make any sense. We reached out to State Police Chief of Staff Major Jim Mitchell with several questions, including leadership's involvement with the search and if it was appropriate for Joseph Comer's ex and accuser, along with the first sergeant working with her investigating the case, to be conducting surveillance on the corporal. In a statement, Mitchell said that Colonel Chambers and the executive staff became aware of the search warrant on Thursday, May 4th. It continued. The executive staff had concerns with the search warrant to include the statement of probable cause. The Montague County prosecutor was contacted on Friday, May 5th, and the concerns were discussed. The prosecutor gave assurance of the validity of the search warrant and directed it to be served by law enforcement. The appropriateness of Mara and Huddleston conducting surveillance on Joseph Comer was not addressed. I firmly believe that this was a rogue. Uh, I don't think that Colonel Chambers knew about that or any, any of the other supervisors, um, but that is what my problem is with this whole thing, is that the players who, are, who were involved in the initial conspiracy, like you had posted last night uh, in, in your broadcast, are continuing to be on duty and having the access and the authority to, to continue to try to frame him and try to cause him problems, and that, that is my concern. Now it is important to note that Major Mitchell says while the search warrant was executed, no insecure weapons or criminal violations were discovered. Corporal Joseph Comer has a family court hearing scheduled at the end of this month. Reporting live in the studio, Kenny Bass, Eyewitness News. Thank you, Kenny.
Now, if you want to see the full story, which goes all the way back to the anonymous letter sent to Eyewitness News, you can find that on our YouTube channel. And to get updates, just be sure to follow us on social media. We are on all platforms, and you can also find us online at WCHSTV.com for the latest news as well.